okay base guy here what's going on youtube welcome back to the channel so today i want to talk to you guys about some do's and don'ts if you are new to home theater there's a, a big laundry list of things that you shouldn't do or try to avoid when you are running your home theater i want to go through some of my top seven don'ts in a home theater and how to make sure you can avoid these issues so that you can maximize your experience in your home theater so they're not in any particular order but we will number them from seven down to one and uh, see if these apply to you and if i can help you make your home theater better let's get right into it all right, coming in at number seven. Don't put all your speakers in the front of the room. Do not do it. I've seen so many home theater in a box setups or small satellite setups, book sales, whatever, and they're all arrayed in the front of the room. That is not going to work. It defeats the purpose of having a home theater if you're not going to try to put them as close to their positions as possible. When you're watching a movie, the sound engineer has placed certain sounds to a certain speaker because it's supposed to give you the illusion that it's happening from that part of the room or that part of the movie. So it's very ideal that you put your speakers as close to where they're meant to be placed. So front left, front right, center, surround right, surround left, your basic five channel setup. You wanna put those in those positions as close as possible so that when you are watching that movie, you get a realistic experience or there really is no point of having the speakers at all. So please do not put all your speakers up front. It will not work, I promise. All right, coming in at number six, don't buy products just because a reviewer or an influence, influencer told you to. Like me, for example. I'm a YouTuber, obviously. I'm an influencer. I do reviews. There's tons of people who do reviews on things. Don't just buy it because I have it or because somebody else has it or because somebody told you to. Make sure that you make your own judgment. The point of my job is to get products in that I think you guys would like and that I personally like, and I do reviews on it. And I try to give my most honest opinion and help you guys make a decision. But it ultimately needs to be your decision. Just because you see it on YouTube or see it on a magazine or see it on a TV show doesn't mean that it's right for you. For example, I've had two SVS PB4000s. They are incredible subwoofers and I talked about them nonstop when I had them. And for you, you may think, okay, if K-Pace likes them, then they has to be really good. Well, maybe, but it might not be good for you. It might be too much bass. It might be too big for the room. It might not look pleasing. It might be too much money. All these different things. So don't buy things just because an influencer tells you to. Um, make sure you make your own assessment. Stay within your budget. Buy what's comfortable to you, what makes you happy. Don't think you have to keep up with everybody else that you see. Um, be your own person, get what you want, and as long as you're happy, then I'm happy, and that's all that matters. Coming in at number five, don't spend all your money on one particular item in your home theater. For example, don't spend all your money on your speakers and buy a cheap receiver, or don't buy a huge sound system and get a small 1080p TV. You want everything to pretty much match in quality and capability. So for example, I have a 4K projector, right? 100 inch projector, and I have really good speakers to match the image quality. There's nothing worse than having a really nice picture, a really nice screen, and the sound sounds terrible, not very, uh, um, inviting, it doesn't sound very energetic, it doesn't sound very lively, it doesn't have that impact. There's nothing worse than that, and vice versa. There's nothing worse than having a really nice sound system than having a small 35 inch TV in the living room. It just doesn't make any sense. So you wanna divvy up the loot. Make sure that everything complements each other. If you're gonna have really expensive speakers, then you're gonna wanna pair them with equally expensive equipment to power them or to feed them the information or audio, video, whatever the case is. Make sure that you don't spend too much on one thing so that you have enough left for the other components in your home theater. People often forget that home theater is not just about audio. It's about the seats, it's about the television, it's about the lighting, it's about the comfort comfortableness, it's about the decor, it's about the acoustic treatment. There's a lot that goes into a home theater other than just speakers and speaker wire and things like that. So make sure that you uh, take some of that money and you divide it into different sections so that all pieces of your home theater have uh, the same amount of quality, same price point, uh, all that good stuff. Coming in at number four is don't 
I mean, don't mix brands of speakers in your home theater. I've seen so many different home theaters in my time or talked to some people who have, let's say like a Eclipse front speaker and a Eclipse right speaker and then their center channel is like from Polk and then their rear speakers are from like Definitive Technology or something, whatever the case is. Don't mix and match speakers. It's highly ideal to buy from the same brand and even more ideal to, bra to buy from the same model, from the same trim level, we'll call it, because it's very important to have a tonal quality that's all the same, timbre matching, making sure that everything sounds like one as that plane flies past you or as that kid runs from one side of the room to the other. You want everything to sound the same. Um, so when you mix and match speakers, you change the quality or the properties of that sound. So let's say you have clip speakers on the front left and front right, and they're big, right? So you have a lot of bass, you have a lot of boom, a lot of impact, but then you have this small satellite speaker as your center channel from a different company that doesn't have the same tonal quality or that umph, that impact, that bass, like your clip speakers do. So now you're cranking up the volume so you can hear voices now, but that's too loud because the speakers are, it's just a mess, right? So it's better to match speakers if you can so that you have a really tight, cohesive sound. You may think, well, KP Scott, I, I have mixed max speakers and they sound pretty good. And I bet you they do. But just because that sounds good doesn't mean it couldn't sound better. If you like what you hear now with your mixed max speakers, You'll love what you hear when you pick one brand. And that's how it's supposed to be. You want things to be um, equally as far as, as, as sound goes. You want it to be an equal uh, cohesive sound so that everything sounds well as the sound pans around the room. So don't do it. <laughs> All right, coming in at number three, I'm talking to a lot of people on this one. Don't max all of your speaker levels. Like on your AVR, when you go into your AVR settings or your preprocessor, you go to settings, configuration, speaker level, and you can change it minus 10 or positive 10. Don't crank it up to positive 10. You are going to cause, potentially cause yourself some issues in the long run. So for example, if you have an AV receiver, especially people who have an AV receiver, they have built-in amplifiers, obviously, to power your speakers but there's only so much power that they can handle. So when you crank your levels up and then you crank the volume up, you're going to use all the power that it has. And what it's gonna do, is gonna struggle to send that power to that speaker consistently. You have what we call RMS power. RMS power means the power an amplifier can give consistently. Max power is a power rating of an amplifier that can only give that amount of juice for a short period of time. It's not made to last uh, for a long continuous stretch. So for example, if I have an amplifier rated at 50 watts RMS, 100 watts peak, what that means is my amplifier can give me 50 watts all day long, no problem. Every now and then it can give me a hundred, but it can't sustain that. It's gonna give me distortion, it's not gonna sound well over time. It may uh, end up hurting or harming my speakers because the power isn't clean anymore. So you don't wanna max out your, uh, your AVR, your speaker levels, because it may sound good for a moment, but over time you start to stress your receiver, you may send a bad signal to your speakers, and you could blow your speakers or fry your AV receiver or your amplifier. So don't think just because it goes to positive tension that you should put it there. It's not ideal. You could save yourself some issues if you keep it around zero or maybe even underneath that. Coming in at number two, don't hang your speakers too high on the wall. A lot of people like to use like satellite speakers or something like that, or if you have a home theater in a box, you can hang them wherever you want to, like a keyhole or mount them on the wall, whatever you wanna do. But you don't wanna put them too high, especially if you're running like a Dolby Atmos system. You want a clear distinction between the, the floor level speakers and the speakers that are meant to be up above your head. So if you're watching TV or you're watching a movie and your center channel is too high, your voices will be coming over your head. So it's gonna sound odd to the human brain, to the human ear. It's why are my voices coming above me, but I'm looking down here. It's very strange. Same thing with the surround. If you mount your surrounds too high, well, if that little girl who's running across the screen is below you, but it's coming above you, it just throws everything off. So make sure you don't place your speakers too high. You wanna put them right above ear level in that kind of vicinity, 
put it around your ear level so that it's natural to the brain. So when you're watching it, it doesn't throw off your attention. You're not thinking that sounded weird. She's up here, but on the screen, she's down here. It sounds weird to you and it kind of distracts you from the movie or it can. So make sure you don't place your speakers too high on the wall if you're gonna mount them or if you're gonna put them on stands, make sure the stands aren't too tall. Whatever it is, keep it around your ear level. All right, the last one for you. Have you guessed what it is? You probably haven't, because there's so many different things I could possibly tell you. But my number one is don't put your speakers in a bookshelf or inside a cabinet. And the reason being, Let's say I have a, a small bookshelf speaker that has a port on the back, a, ba a base port, so that air shoots from the back when the driver moves. When you put something like that inside a bookshelf or inside a cabinet, you start to reinforce that speaker in a negative way. You start to change the color of that sound. Um, so you typically want to take it out of a bookshelf or out of a cabinet. Now, if you have to put it in a cabinet, you wanna bring it as forward as possible, right to the edge of the shelf so that there's room to breathe behind it and the surface that it's sitting on isn't adding any extra reflections. So if you have to put it in a bookshelf or you have to put it in a cabinet, make sure you scoot it all the way forward so that it's flush with the shelf that it's sitting on so that the, the bottom of the shelf doesn't add any extra reflection to the sound and muddy up your sound. But if you can avoid a cabinet or a bookshelf altogether, it'll clear up your sound, especially in a center channel. A lot of people have like an entertainment stand and they can sit their uh, center channel inside that cutout. It's convenient, it's a nice place, and it may even look aesthetically pleasing, but it's not ideal to the sound, especially not the center channel. It starts to muffle the voices, makes them a little less audible, not necessarily uh, softer or louder, it just makes it a little more unclear. It makes it sound like the person's mumbling maybe. Um, so you wanna make sure that you can avoid putting things in cabinets or in bookshelves to, to keep from muffling and muddying the sound. Um, and if you can't, make sure you move it forward off that shelf so you don't add any extra reflections. All right guys, that's gonna do it for all the don'ts for all the new guys out there. Everybody was once a new guy. I remember when I was a new guy and pretty much everything on this list that I named, I did at one point. But you have to start somewhere. We're here to help. What I want you guys to do is head down to the comment section down below and list me a few more items that you think people should not do in their home theaters. And make sure you say why. Anything that I miss, leave me down below in the comment section and make sure you explain it for those who are new to the hobby. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe if you are not already, and we'll see you in the next video. K-Pace guy out. Peace.